moment. Try to let go of all the busyness of getting here. and settle your mind in what's going on now. I'm having trouble getting anybody's attention. Sorry, guys. People at home are like on the spot, but people who are arriving are not. Hi, Luciana. Hi. You need to her to come down here. Mostly I just need y'all to settle in. Settle in. Okay. Class is started. The recording started. <laughs> no, you're it's I know we're late, but sometimes it's good when if you're running behind to not do all the social things when you come into the room. Just sit down so that the energy can keep going, you know. So it's really helpful to do that, you know, but don't feel bad about, it, you know, I'm one of the worst. So, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> you know, you check out the presence of what the, what's in the room instead of thinking about your presence being added to the room, just kind of noticing. Because I've seen people walk into a meditation where everybody's quiet, completely quiet, and they come in like, you know, oh, I forgot this, and da 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 da. You know, they they're not taking in any information from the people already there, and so it's really helpful to bring mindfulness to that. You know, so uh, in the dampa. What was that? I just, I just, I just blew it up. <laughs> Y'all are missing quite a show here. So it's the price you pay on Zoom. So, okay. Humor is great. So that's not a problem. So kind of enjoy the smile sitting here knowing that you're with people who are interested in Buddhism just as you are, you know. And this, this is rare in this country, so this is something to be happy about, to notice, to enjoy. Take a few breaths and really let yourself settle into this activity of being here, remembering the reason that you decided to show up. I'm really trying to set a positive intention to use this time well. and make this intention expansive by including the wish that it not just benefit yourself, but that it ripples out to benefit those around you.
let your body relax. Last week we mentioned that sometimes bringing the mind up, you know, open-mindedness, curiosity, the mind that listens. These can help us use this time well. So now we're going to recite the Refuge of Bodhicitta prayer. Or can you go up and just use the mouse and click got it on there? Thank you. <clears throat> Y'all can see it at home, I assume. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, I may become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, I may become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Okay, so we've been, we, you know, this is this class is on purification. Are you familiar with that topic? Yeah so so okay so what do you remember from last week i know you're exempt I'm exempt too. okay purification is the action we do to help us recognize our negative actions of body speech and mind so purification is the action that we do in order to to help us recognize our negative actions of body, speech, and mind. To recognize our negative actions of body, speech, and mind. But what does purification actually, yes, that's one of the steps. Okay. Why is it an important step? Acknowledging our responsibility. Regretting. Yeah, our responsibility. So this this acknowledging what we've done, this recognizing what we've done is, is being able to take responsibility for what is done is critical to our ability to change our minds, to kind of go to, you know, even just to reflect on it. Okay, was that a good thing to do? <laughs> Is that a good habit I have? Maybe it's not a good habit I have. And that's what allows us to consider changing that habit, you know, or not doing a certain action again. Um, and we need, um, in order to actually purify an action, what do we need to change? Our mind. 
In what way? Yes, absolutely. Yes, we need to change. And what, but there's a particular action of mine that we need in order to be successful at purifying. Regret it. Don't want to do it again. <laughs> you don't Intense. want to do it again. Yeah. So you need regret is we need really sincere regret in order to give the action power. And then we need to really develop a mind of resolve that's determined not to do this again. Now, obviously, for most of our actions, we can't just decide, oh, I'm never going to do this again. It's a process. So we have to, but, so if we make this a daily activity, then we can just say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to try to not do this. Or tomorrow morning, I'm going to try not to do this, you know. What happens if you do it? <laughs> so you say, tomorrow morning, I'm going to try not to do it. What do you do then? Regret it, reset your intention. Regret it, reset your intention. Mm -hmm. That's good. You don't, there's no need to pack a bag with it, to carry around with you for the rest of time. You know, you want to try to remember so you can purify it again that night. But also, then you want to go, okay, this is obviously difficult for me to remember. Are there things I can do to help me remember? I don't want to repeat this, you know, or I'm trying to learn not to repeat it. You know, so, you, you know, sometimes you're working on something, you know, like say, with your partner or a coworker or something, you can put a post-it note somewhere. So that you just kind of, oh yeah, that's right. I'm working on this. I'm trying not to, you know, so that you can be reminded. You know, we have wonderfully, you know, high tech phones that can send us a little, you know, reminder. Um, you know, these, these things are helpful to just, you know, this is why remember how people used to wear rubber bands to remind themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and then when it would happen, they'd stamp. I knew someone who would mark their hand. They walk one hand for all the, you know, things to purify that night and the other hand with all the things to rejoice about, you know? So, you know, there, you know, we can use um, tools to help us both remember it and then, and then take care of it in our nightly practice, you know, or our morning practice, but it's, it's, um, So the key to, to, you know, like you make a promise and then you go, oops, you know, is that recognition and have it increase your resolve rather than have it support the notion that maybe giving up is suitable. Well, you know, it goes, we have to counter that because what does giving up say? Well, giving up first says that, you know, that you, that you don't believe you can change, doesn't it? Giving up is sort of like saying, oh, I can't do it. Well, the Buddha said you can do it. Everything we learn from science now tells us we can do it. We can change our minds. We can change our actions. We've done it all our lives, you know? So we want to, when that mind comes up, I don't know if you have that habit, you know, you may not have that habit, but if you're, the habit comes up, oh, I can't do it, it's too hard or whatever. You need to counter that, you know, even just, even in little ways, like just telling your mind, that's not true. <laughs> you, know, you know, I just didn't succeed in this moment, you know, just it doesn't, you know, had nothing to do with your potential to be able to do it. You know, it just didn't happen now. You know, and that's okay. That's how it works. The slow process. Okay. Any questions come up from what we just discussed last week? <clears throat> I just want to comment on that last sentence. Um, 
Is it that you can't, you you feel like you can't do it or you really don't want to? Well, you have to look at that. You have to discern that because that's a good point because sometimes we, um, we really just don't want to try. (laughs) And so we want to look at that because that may mean that you're not convinced that this is something that's bringing you suffering. So you need to do more reflection on it. You know, the next time it happens, how do you feel? How does the other person feel? How does, you know, all that kind of stuff. You see, you know, is this important? I mean, we all have stuff that we're probably not going to address in this life. You know, it's just not going to happen in this life. It's just not a priority, you know. But we can we want to try not to let that be everything. You know, we need to, you know, we also probably can't, you know, do everything. You know, we want to think, you know, that um, we don't want to bog ourselves down with noticing every breath that's tainted with ignorance or attachment or aversion. You know, we just need to pick a few things, work on those, see that it you know, see that it works, that our minds are workable, you know, and then we pick up some other things. And then you'll find that it generalizes, you know, so that you're doing in general less of like, you know, maybe, you know, you're less sarcastic or you're less impatient, just across the board, not just, you know. And then there are other things that's like, okay, you've gotten pretty good with this, but there's this. (laughs) You're not making, haven't made any movement around. So, you know, and it's just being accepting that, okay, that's, that's where I am. exhaustion so cecilia last week you asked a question about if something's already started to ripen can you do anything about it didn't you ask that am i remembering that correctly yeah okay yes so yeah once something has ripened you can't really mitigate it you can't there's nothing you can really do about that except how you respond to it so it's such a good opportunity to, you know, to think, hmm, karma says I created the cause for this. And boy, I don't like it. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I don't want to create the cause for this again. And so you try to use the event as something to help you, you know, be more mind, you know, whatever it is, you know, like say you're cheated at the store or something, or the mechanic, you know, overcharges you or something. You, you know, you want to use that opportunity to say, mm, I must have been greedy at some point, you know, and this is the result of that. So let me remember that, you know, walking out of the store realizing, ooh, I didn't pay enough for that, maybe isn't the proper response, you know, but, you know, it sometimes can't do anything about it, but other times you can go, oh, go back in and say, I'm sorry, we we got that, or you gave me too much change, or you got it, da, 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 and you correct it, you know, so, but it's an opportunity to really kind of think, oh, that's right, because according to the Buddha, every single thing that we experience, we create the cause for. So all that positive stuff we experience, all the lovely flavors of food, all the beautiful days, all the, you know, whatever books you read that you like, all, we created the cause for those things. So we certainly want to rejoice about that, you know, and do them again, you know. But we need to apply the same idea to all the suffering we experience, you know, but It's this wonderful opportunity to take responsibility for that event in the sense of, I created the cause for this, instead of immediately 
you know, reacting with blame to the other person or the situation or feeling sorry for yourself or life's not fair, you know, whatever your mind, you know, the conversation goes on, you know. So instead, it's an opportunity to go, hmm, this, this could teach me something. So it doesn't mean you have to feel bad. It's not about like, but it is about taking that, that feeling that this is personal, you know, that this person is doing this to me as opposed to, no, I created the cause and this person's a condition for that seed to ripen. He's got his own karma being created there you know and they'll be suffering in the future so you don't have to worry about that at all it's out of your hands but you can make it create the you can make take that same event that's causing you suffering and turn it into something that's going to cause you happiness in the future and these are just mindsets that we have to develop because right away, it makes your life less painful, you know, especially with the little stuff, because it's just, you know, it's little stuff. But if you're there, are things in your life that you kind of go, oh, this stuff never works for me. There's a reason. And that reason is your past actions. It's not someone else's, you know, so we need to own it. This is, yeah, go ahead. Mine is like manipulating though. Yo. <laughs> Even if I say, okay, I have to look at this, this might be my fault, but something creeps in that, yeah. you know, it's saying, oh, well. Self-grasping ego. Well, yeah. <laughs> you and your words. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's correct. But the first thing is the probably this response, okay, maybe it's my fault. That's not the way we need to look at it. Mm -hmm. Fault is not involved here. Mm -hmm. That we created a cause and this is the the end of that scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay. We did it out of ignorance. We don't want the suffering. It's not like we're doing things going, oh, I can't wait till I suffer about this. <laughs> You know, we think it's going to do something positive for us. Mm -hmm. You know, like we walk out of the store and they gave us the wrong change. Ooh, now I could go stop at Starbucks or something, have an expensive coffee. You know, we think it's something, you know, that, you know, this is, you know, we don't realize that we're setting up another cause for something that's going to come back to haunt us in the future mm. where someone's going to cheat you because you've just cheated the store. You know, so it's kind of like recognizing when we um, say, oh, that second piece of chocolate cake's not going to hurt. You know, we have to learn to delay gratification, right? <laughs> you know, you're an adult, you need to learn, oh, this has consequences, you know. So it's the same kind of thing with our mental, with our attitudes, with trying to develop a mindset is that we need to take the long-term view that looking for blame creates suffering in our lives now. And it definitely has no good because it's blaming external things for our happiness and suffering. The Buddha said, that's not how it works. We create the cause for our happiness and suffering. You know, doesn't mean people aren't conditions, but they're creating their own path of suffering or happiness. So if someone cheats you, they're going to be cheated in the future if they don't purify that action. You know, but if we start to get to not take any responsibility for being cheated, we're not breaking that chain. They can just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Yeah, Jack. Yeah. So what if you uh, what if you just take joy? In it? Take joy in what way? Well, this is uh, <clears throat> in other words, I, I I guess when bodhisattvas or anybody like that are uh, say killed, they uh, they take joy in it because they're exhausting karma and they're getting closer to enlightenment. 
Exhausting karma does not get you to enlightenment. Because you can't, you want to exhaust every seed? Okay, so this is an important point. So it's not enough to just, oh, good, that karmic seed's exhausting. What else do you want to do? Well, if you if you look at it as like a learning opportunity and you make a positive action. You make it, yeah. So take on, the, take on other people's suffering. But you could just take on your own. I know, but you, you but my point is it's a, it's rejoicing that it's exhausting. It ain't gonna get you to enlightenment. Okay. It's a better response than bitching about the suffering. No question. Okay. That just creates the cause for more suffering. You know, it's just like, oh, it's not my, you know, responsibility. You know, poor me, poor me. This doesn't happen to other people. It only happens to me. Blah, blah, blah. None of that's true. Okay. So we're just making up stories to ourselves. We want to take that next step and go, oh, this is an opportunity to remind myself that I don't want to treat others this way. I don't want to create this cause again. That's purification. Exhausting just means a seed is ripened and seeds exhaust. This is why nobody's stuck anywhere forever. You know, you're not stuck in a hell realm forever because finally whatever seed ripened to cause you to go there, exhaust. But you don't have really any opportunity, usually in a hell realm, to purify anything because you're just suffering. You know, but till you get out. So, you know, that's the that's why there is joy in bad things happening. But if we, you know, bodhisattvas can see oh, I've harmed this person in some way. Now I'm receiving, you know, the the effect of that negative actions produce negative results. You know, so this is my opportunity to correct that for the future. You know, whether it's cutting them some slack, you know, whatever. It's yeah, Brian. Part of that, like what Jack was saying, if somebody cheats me, I look at them, they, they provided me an opportunity to learn. They've actually, they're, I, don't, I don't know, doing me a favor is not right, maybe the right way of putting it. Given but it me, doesn't matter. This is how sentient beings help us become enlightened. Yes, they're showing us. But they're giving me the opportunity to learn from what they've done to me. So I don't. Why? Why is it an opportunity to learn what, what they, what, well, uh, by, if, what I look at, if I look at it properly, it's like you cheated me. That means I cheated somebody in the past. You've. Karma would say you cheated that person. <laughs> Or so remind you, me that and practice and practice that. And then also I guess have compassion for them. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> the other part. Because they're if they're cheating me, they're suffering. Well, and they're going to suffer in the and future. They're going to suffer because they've cheated me. Because they're going to be cheated in, in the future. That, but I do want to recognize No, you want to have compassion. I want to have compassion for the fact that they're creating suffering. That's they're creating suffering for themselves. That's one thing we can do. That creates merit. That's which leads to happiness. You know, so that's that's good. We can take responsibility and not cause blame. We can just say, well, I must have created the cause for this. No, that takes training. Yes. If you have that, oh, I'm being wronged inside of you, and then to become compassionate at that moment. That's all takes training. Yeah. It all takes reflecting and really looking at the subject of karma, of cause and effect, and really going, hmm, could this possibly be true? Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the ways we look at karma, you know, one of the ways we try to decide whether, you know, this could be any truth to this, you know, cause and effect is if we just look at the world. Everything's the result of causes. Things don't happen in isolation, you know? We all know that if we decide, oh, I'm not gonna go to school today, you know, that our grades will suffer. You know, there's cause and effect in action. Well, we tend to not take responsibility is that even our thoughts and our minds have an effect. No. And that it's not immediate, you know? So it's not, you know, we don't conveniently know right away. 
So we need a teacher. That's the whole point of teachings. Mm -hmm. Because we, because of our self-grasping, because we think, oh, someone wronged me, like no one else is wronged, you know, it must be, you know, I couldn't have possibly deserved this. You know, the Buddha's going, that's not a correct view. You know, that's a mistaken view. That's the view of ignorance that thinks that there's some me that has to be protected all the time. From all these palm doers. <laughs> so, but it's a training. It takes a lot of, of reflection. And then it also takes, do you feel better assuming that it's true? You know, to me, the whole thing about cause and effect gives me all the power. You know, it means, oh, the world is not happening to me. You know, if I clean up my act, clean up my mind, I have nothing but happiness in my future. And that's cool to me. <laughs> so, you know, unfortunately, until we're much further on the path, we aren't going to see the the long-term causative effect picture. You know, we're not able to see our past lives and go, oh, yeah, I really, you know, stole a lot of <laughs> different people, you know. <laughs> no wonder I get cheated a lot in this life you know we're not going to be able to see that so so this is why part of purification is reliance on the teachings mm -hmm. karma the complete picture of cause and effect can only be known by a buddha because only a buddha has omniscience and knows the cause and effect of every single living being you know and we, we're not there so what do, you, what do you mean by he knows the cause and effect of every human being because the an enlightened mind knows all everything about everyone about everything and in every moment, the mind of a Buddha is not bound by a body. It pervades everything. It is present everywhere, all the time. It knows what's in your mind because there's no barrier to that. It knows your whole past. And bodhisattvas, as you get higher and higher levels, bodhisattvas learn the ability if they, you know, bring to mind a particular sentient being, they can know their past. The difference between, you know, once you get to a be at the level of a Buddha, you have omniscience. You don't, don't you don't have to turn your mind. You don't have to think of somebody to be able to do that. It's your your ever present. It's kind of cool. Yeah. How do we apply this to physical suffering? It's the same thing. So one of the things is that you read about karma. The, what you know? What's the cause of of illness? Cause of illness is usually harming others, physically harming others. You know. So you know you were soldiers in the past. You know you were violent in the past, and now you're having physical difficulties in the present. You know. So it's not. You know we can't know. exactly exactly what it is we can only know this is congruent with the action with the action so the result is similar to the cause if you cause someone physical pain and now you're experiencing physical pain you know that's one of the the site you know that's one of the long term um uh, there are many seeds planted with each action so like if you kill someone, one of the ways it's going to ripen is you're going to go to a hell realm until that exhaust. And then eventually in the future, you're born, a, a, you know, some other kind of being and you're going to experience pain, physical pain. And, you know, and you might be born a human and you're going to be murdered. You know, they all of those things. So even someone who's murdered is part of a link of things. It's, you know, it's not separate from them. Doesn't mean they did anything in this life to deserve it. It's not about that. It's just cause and effect. So anytime we have anything, if you have a cold, yep. you have a, it's, it's a result of something that you've done. So what is the purification process for those things? It's like when you, when you realize, like if say you, you know, you realize I've caught a cold again, you just remind yourself 
this is because I didn't take care of someone else's physical health, well-being. You know, maybe it's even as simple as something like um, that you always went to work sick. You know, so you expose other people to your. Well, I think you said it could have been something much worse than was sort of purified. Yes, it could be the yes, it, yeah. But before we get there, because that's that's you know, so it it can be also. It is the nature of human beings in this universe to get sick. We're vulnerable, you know. Our bodies are fragile. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a result of our karma. So, be, you know, animals that are have, you know, I don't know, turtle shells, armadillo, armadillo things clearly don't protect them from cars. But this is, but, you know, there's, there, yeah, there, yeah, absolutely. It's all karma, you know, so it's just, it's, but, you know, so some of the big collective karma that we all share you know, that we like, we're vulnerable to getting sick, where, you know, food can kill us, uh, the air can kill us, you know, everything that brings us life also can kill us. That's part of our karma. Yeah. It's the whole nature of this planet, you know, we created the cause for that. The good news, so it's like, the good news here is what we need to change is our minds. You know, we can't go back and fix past actions, but we want to develop a mind that never wants to harm someone, never wants to cheat them, never wants to harm them physically, never wants to, you know, to cause them ill, you know, that will protect us from creating the conditions that we experience this in the future. So every time we get sick, we can use it as an opportunity. Oh, let me remember to, you know, respect the lives of others, to protect the lives of others. You know, to just, um, again, it's that taking responsibility that we are interdependent. We're not these separate things just out there having no impact, but we are interdependent. It matters what we do. You know, how we think, because our actions follow our mind so if we have the habit of just sort of like general ill will towards people you know yeah, yeah, we're very judgy and constantly kind of going oh, i don't think they're very nice da, 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 da. that is going to be reflected in our actions as well maybe not to that person that you just judged you know but it makes us more careless with people because we don't think everybody deserves care and this, you know, takes that out of the question. You know, the Buddha said, of course, everybody wants happiness and should be happy. There's no have to earn it routine. It's just that you have to create the cause for it. Nobody's meeting this out. You know, nobody's handing out the rewards or punishments. It's just cause and effect. So just like you can plant a seed, and you think you've done everything it needs, but it still doesn't grow into anything. You know, that's just something wasn't there that it needed. Okay, well, let's do a practice just so you get some of that. So the uh, two, there are two common practices that were usually given by a teacher, you know, that say, oh, you should do this every day. Lama Zopa Rinpoche's favorite is Vajrasapa practice. It's a hundred syllable mantra and a visualization, but you don't actually have to say the hundred syllable mantra. So this is an easy version and a harder version. Mm -hmm. And you do that every day and before you go to sleep or the, you do it once a day and you try to purify everything from the previous 24 hours so that you you have a clean slate every 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> this helps us from having really heavy seeds on our mind stream because the sooner we regret something, the lighter it is. You know, so so even if we don't get to any other step other than regretting harming, you know, that's going to reduce the heaviness of our actions. So we just need to, you know, start where we are. Uh, 
another practice is the 35 Buddhas, recite, recitation of the 35 Buddhas, the names of the 35 Buddhas. Lama Zongkapa, behind the stupa, um, did millions of those or a million of those. So, um, Hmm. Not really. You can memorize them pretty quickly. It's helpful to listen to 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 have a recording that you and just listen to it. But yeah, they don't make any sense. So you just have to, you know. And if you're doing it in Tibetan, you know, that's more power to you. But I can I don't do them in Tibetan. Um, then if you learn in Tibetan, yeah. And, but then also, if you learn what each Buddha purifies, you know, like, you know, 25 eons in the hell realms or something, it's, you know, it's it's like really easier to remember their names. <laughs> it's like my favorite is the one for anger, because I tend to be impatient. And um, I got the um, empowerment, well, not the empowerment, what do you call it? The loom, the oral transmission of the 35 Buddhist practice from Lama Zopa Rinpoche in 2004 um, at a retreat in Adelaide. Well, Rinpoche doesn't just do, it's not like he just read the 35 Buddha names. You know, you know, no, it took hours. You know, he was talking about all this stuff and all this kind of thing. I had to pee. And finally, I just said, you're just going to have to go. You just, just, he's not taking a pause. You just have to go. So I'm in the bathroom, the porta potty thing, you know, when he does the one on anger. And I just thought, <laughs> that is just so, that just, I mean, you know, it's like, I don't have the merit to get it even, you know, that's how, you know, this is why anger is a problem, you know, but anything, I mean, it's just, it was hilarious to me that it's just like, in that way that, you know, it's sort of like, okay, you didn't create the cause. So, you know, whereas this other nun, if you could just, you know, would go to the bathroom, she go to the bathroom, she didn't miss a single name. <laughs> you know she had the merit to have them all you know yeah you know there you go so we must be humble okay practice then but don't forget what i said last week anything can be a remedy so whether you know the 35 buddhas of other stuff the main thing is regretting then resolving to try not to do it you can do you know you can consider the remedy to be an apology to be a donation to be whatever you know whatever it can be anything all the things you're used to doing you know when you make you know errors with people but it's you know these are considered to have power because you've got the power of enlightened beings with you you know so might as well take advantage <laughs> So anyway, um, okay, so the power of regret purifies the experience similar to the cause, which let's say for killing is getting killed, dying young, getting sick. The power of reliance, refuge, and bodhicitta Purify the environmental results, which for killing is living in a place where the food and medicine are not conducive to good health. The power of the remedy, the action one, what one does as the antidote, purifies the karma that causes birth in the lower realms. The power of the resolve purifies as the action similar to the cause. That helps us not repeat it. You know, so because that's our habits or what causes us so many difficulties. Because once something becomes a habit, we just do it again and again and again. So anyway, so we keep going back to the lower realms. All right. So these are my slides from Discovering Buddhism. So Venerable Rabina gave me a, the, the Vajrasattva practice. I don't know. I think it was in 2002. 
Um, so it just, and she, of course, got it from Lama Yeshi. So it just has those words. So the practice, you can find this practice in the Gold Prayer Book. You can find it in How to Meditate by um, Kathleen McDonald. Um, you can find it on the Lama Yeshi Wis Wisdom Archive website. And I have the link somewhere in here. So I can, so those of you at home can copy it. So this is Vajrasapa. So the image on the, what do you call it? The right is an image of Vajrasapa. You will often see Vajrasapa also with consort, you know, with a woman in the picture. That makes it a higher yoga tantra practice, but Rinpoche says it's fine, whatever you do. I prefer to, I mean, this is how I learned it. This is how I teach it, is just Vajrasapa by himself. So when we visualize, we're trying to get this sense of an enlightened being, the top of our head, facing the same way we are, but who's, you know, radiant white, you know, kind of image. So you'll hear the visualization in a moment. The mantra, you will see this spelled a million different ways. And I'm, I don't think I'm exaggerating. <laughs> so it's good to find one version that makes sense to you when you're pronouncing it, memorize it, and then you don't worry about what's in prayer books or anything else because it's going to be transliterated a different way. And you can look at it and go, ah, oh, I must be pronouncing it wrong. You might be, but you know. It's it Sanskrit, but it doesn't. It's Sanskrit, I believe. But I can't promise you. But Vajrasapa, I don't think they, they do use the word Vajra, but I don't, I think it's almost all the mantras are in Sanskrit. But I can't. You know, we can maybe look in the gold prayer book and it might tell us. Um, the good news is you really can memorize it. You know, it just takes a while. I had to have Geshe Gellick record it for me and I played it on the recording. And it took him forever to make a tape because he could only do it really fast. I'd go, that doesn't help me. Anyway, okay. So this is the meaning though. I wanted to... This is how it's been kind of by Lama Yeshi or Lama Zopa Rinpoche. So the, you see the short Vajrasapha meditations on the lamayeshi.com website. So you can go search by Vajrasapha and find this short Vajrasapha meditation. Okay. So what the meaning of it is, you, Vajrasattva, have generated the holy mind, meaning bodhicitta. What's bodhicitta? Thank you, Roy. So the mind that wishes to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, according to your pledge. So when you hear the word samaya, it means like a pledge you've made, a commitment, a promise. Your holy mind is enriched with the simultaneous holy actions of releasing transmigratory beings from samsara. Transmigratory beings are us, those of us who are keep getting reborn, die, reborn, die. Um, samsara is cyclic existence. Samsara is cyclic existence. This, that this being born into a um, suffering, existence, dying, being born again, being born again. So sometimes they call it the, you know, like this, this describes the circling suffering aggregates, which means our body and mind. Because of course, it's not a place. It's our mind. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens in my life, happiness or suffering, good or bad, with a pleased, holy mind, never give up, but please guide me. So you're asking Vajrasapha not to give up on you. Please stabilize all happiness, including the happiness of the upper realms, which means 
a happy realm rebirth, like a human rebirth or a God realm rebirth or a demigod realm rebirth, but human rebirth the best. Um, actualize all actions and sublime and common realizations. So those are the actions of merit, you know, the actions that lead you to uh, benefiting others and to becoming enlightened. Sublime and common realizations, like, you know, so like sublime is like realizing emptiness, how things actually exist. Common realizations are like impermanence and law of cause and effect. The, uh, you know, things in conventional reality that killing's not a good thing to do, you know. And please make the glory of the five wisdoms abide in my heart. And those are the five, you know, there's mirror-like wisdom, the, you know, they just have these names that won't mean anything. So you study what they are. But um, but it's the, the wisdoms that a Buddha has. So um, so this is also on that page from the I think from the Nama Yeshi's website. And it's in how to meditate, all those things. Any questions? Yes. Why are the snakes around them? Those are actually silken scarves. Oh, okay. But sometimes there's snakes. Nargajuna had snakes. But everybody else has silken scarves. So what is a symbol of the snakes, the one that do them? He's considered Naga. He was able to tame the Nagas. Nagas are like serpent-like beings that live in the sea. I've heard many different possibilities there. But they, I'm sorry? Temptation? That's like the Maras. So you'll sometimes hear them to refer to the Maras, and the Maras are temptations of different types. Um, I'm looking for something in just a second. But that's not what it is, though. Okay, I found, um, a recording of the mantra that's kind of slow. So I thought it might be helpful. I'm gonna put the link to it in the chat. Okay. It's a YouTube thing. All right. All right. So we're going to go through the practice. So take a moment to kind of, you know, you don't need to have your notebooks. You don't need to do anything at the moment. Put those down. Oh, I'm sorry. Any questions at home? Everybody good? Okay. All right. It's hard for me to see the screen and all these other things I have open on my desktop. Okay. Okay. Now, Roy. Can you go up and get on the the pictures of the people? If you if you take the mouse and go up to it, you'll see something at the top that's just a single line. This little single line here. Okay. So click on that, and then those pictures will go away, so they won't be in the way. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. 
So everything, that, you know, the power of reliance, which is the power of refuge. So we start with refuge. So we say this three times. This is a good time not to take notes. This is a time to do the practice. Do the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened. By this practice of meditating on Guru Vajrasattva, may I reach Buddhahood to benefit all sentient beings. To the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, I go for refuge until I'm enlightened. By this practice of meditating on Guru Vajrasattva, may I reach Buddhahood to benefit all sentient beings. To the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, I go for refuge until I'm enlightened by this practice of meditating on Guru Vajrasattva. May I reach Buddhahood to benefit all sentient beings. So the power of the remedy. So we do three stages to this meditation, this short meditation. So we'll have a visualization and recitation of the mantra. So the main things so I want you to think about this for a moment is to really feel the presence of this enlightened energy above the crown of your head. And this is, I love the number, Rubina. It's a mirror image of your own potential. All the Buddhas are a mirror image of our own potential. So take a moment to generate, you know, to think of things either that you did today or this week or whatever just pops to mind that you're sorry that you did it. Whether it was words or thoughts or actions of body. knowing that that's what we're going to tackle with this practice is to really help us eliminate any suffering that arises from that action and to help us not do it again for as long as we're able. So visualize Vajrasattva above the crown of your head. He is your guru manifesting in this aspect for your benefit is made of radiant, blissful white light. He's sitting cross-legged on a white lotus, which although born out of mud, is untainted by mud, just like our enlightened potential, which is born out of our delusions, but is untainted by them. His face is radiant and beautiful. His eyes are wide and peaceful and full of love and compassion for us. His mouth is red and very sweet. His hair is black and held up in a top knot. His arms are crossed at his heart, left underneath the right. The left is holding a bell which represents wisdom. The right is holding a bhajra, which represents the indestructibility of compassion. Their being crossed represents the union of these two, wisdom and compassion, which symbolizes enlightenment itself, the development of infinite wisdom and infinite compassion. So now we'll recite the verse of praise. Saying a verse of praise with a practice always increases the power. Merely thinking of just your name eradicates all obstacles and immediately purifies all negative karma. Thus to you, unsurpassed Vandrasapa, I pay homage and make prostration. So first, we're in a purify actions of body. So any actions of killing, or calling any actions of stealing,
borrowing them and keeping them until you feel that now they belong to you. Any actions of sexual misconduct where we have harmed others through our sexual actions. You don't have to pick all of these. But you can just think all the actions that I've done with my body that brought harm to others. And really picture the harm being felt by others. Think about how you feel when you feel harmed. And know that it's no different for others. Are you motivated by anger or attachment or just self-grasping? Try to generate compassion for the suffering of others. Generate regret for this harm. Regret for the harm of others and regret for the suffering that it will cause for yourself in the future. The person you harmed retaliated generate compassion for the suffering they'll experience in the future. Now imagine from Again, Vajrasattva above your head, very compassionately sends powerful white nectar and coming out of a hose very forcefully from his heart. And it enters your crown chakra and pours into your entire body, filling you completely. It forces out of your lower orifices all the harm you have ever done to any living being with your body in the form of ink, inky liquid which pours out of you and disappears into space not one atom left So we'll recite the mantra. I'm going to put on the recording. We're not going to do it seven times, but at home, you might do it seven times. You may find the YouTube. Oh. 
Let's hope this works. So tell me if you can hear it. Om Bhadra Sattva Samaya Manupalaya Bhadra Sattva Denu Patita Dido Mebawa Sutta Kayo Mebawa Stupa Kayo Mebawa Anurato Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Medrayatsa Sawa Kama Sutame Pitam Shiyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Bhagawan Sawatata Gata Badra Mame Mutsa Badra Bawa Mahasa Maya Sattva Ahunta. So you're trying to also keep feeling this nectar just pouring into you, you know, like hosing your body out. <laughs> okay. While you recite this, of course, I know you can't, you know, it takes a while, but it's doable. Om Bhadra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Bhadra Sattva Denu Patita Dido Me Bhava Sutta Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anurato Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sarva Kama Sutta Me Hitam Shiyam Kuru Hun Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Bhadra Mama Mehmutsa <laughs> Sawa kama sutsame, hitam shiyam kuru hum, ha 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 ho, bhagawan, sawa tata gata bhadra mame mutsa, bhadra bhava mahata maya sattva ahumpen. Okay, so just take a moment to feel completely purified of all actions of the body. And imagine Guru Vajra Safa extremely pleased with you. Then we're going to recall actions of speech, lying deceiving others through speech, the slander of others, divisive speech, trying to break those who are harmonious, breaking them apart. The gossiping we do about people, hurting others through the words we use or just the tone of voice. Meaningless talk, which waste our precious time and distracts others wasting their time. So think of a few moments where you've caused harm to your speech knowing how hurtful words can be to you, trying to really understand the hurt that others have felt, sometimes even strangers that we're impatient with. Think about whether or not you're motivated by anger or attachment for something you want, a 
just self-grasping. And generate sincere regret for the harm you caused others and yourself by these actions. And generate compassion for yourself and others. And again, Guru Vajrasattva very happily sends powerful nectar again. It pours forcefully through your crown, filling your entire body, this time forcing up to the top of your body, like when water filling a dirty glass forces the junk to come to the top and to overflow. All the negativity of your speech, all the gossip and malicious speech, useless speech, lying. All is purified by this powerful nectar, leaving your body through the top orifices in the form of inky liquid, disappearing into space, not one atom left. Om Bhadra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Bhadra Sattva Denu Patita Dido Mebawa Sutra Kayo Mebawa Dupa Kayo Mebawa Anuratu Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Medrayatsa Sawa Kama Sutra Me Hitam Shiyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Saratata Gata Bhadra Mame Mutsa Bhadra Bhava Mahata Maya Sattva Ahunte Om Bhadra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Bhadra Sattva Denu Patita Dido Me Bhava Sutta Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anurato Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sarva Kama Sutta Me Titham Shiyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bhava Mahasa Maya Sattva Ahunte Om Bhadra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Bhadra Sattva Denu Patita Dido Me Bhava Sutra Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anurato Me Bhava Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Hitam Shiyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bhava Mahasa Maya Sattva Ampe Now feel entirely purified of all negativities of speech. And imagine Guru Vajrasattva extremely pleased with you. Now we're going to deal with purification of our thoughts. <clears throat> so when you think about actions of coveting, the strongly desiring to have the possessions of others, actions of malice, hateful thoughts towards others, wanting to harm them, being unhappy with their success, recall actions of wrong views, strongly holding to your own views, which are the opposite of the truth 
such as the existence of the law of cause and effect. Think about your motivation. Was it anger, attachment, or ignorance? And here, the strongest harm that we do is to ourselves. Thinking in this way, we're creating a cause for all kinds of negative habits to develop, to suffer in the future. And generate regret for the harm that we cause others from this attitude, these ways of thinking, how it changes the way we behave towards others, how we speak to others, whether we take them into account or not, all the different ways that our thoughts impact the well-being of others. Now, Vajrasattva sends light from his heart chakra. This powerful white light enters your crown chakra and fills your entire being. Just like when you turn on a light in a room, the darkness is instantly dispelled. Just as this light hits your heart chakra, the darkness of the negativity of your mind all the anger and violence and depression and resentment and jealousy and bitterness, all are instantly dispelled, not one atom left. Om Bhadra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Bhadra Sattva Denu Patika Dido Me Bhava Sutta Kayo Me Bhava Supa Kayo Me Bhava Anurato Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Drayatsa Sarva Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shiyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 ho, Bhagawan, Saratata Gata, Bhadra Mame Mutsa, Bhadra Bhava, Mahasa Maya Sattva Ahuntan. Oyam Bhadra Sattva Samaya, Manu Palaya, Bhadra Sattva Denu Patita, Dido Me Bhava, Sutta Kayo Me Bhava, Supo Kayo Me Bhava, Anurato Me Bhava, Sarva Siddhi Me Prayatsa, Sarva Kama Sutta Me, Sitam Shiyam Kuru Hum, Ha 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 Ho, Bhagawan, Sarva Tata Gata Bhadra Mame Mutsa, Bhadra Bhava Mahasamaya Sattva Ahunte. Oyam Bhadra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Bhadra Sattva Denu Patita Dido Me Bhava Sutu Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anurato Me Bhava Sawa Siri Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shiyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vadra Mame Mutsa Vadra Bawa Mahasa Maya Sattva Ahumpen. So feel completely purified of all the negativities of mind. Guru Vajra Sattva is extremely pleased with you.
Now we need to generate the determination not to harm with our body, speech, and mind again. Without this, we keep doing the same old things. Determination to not harm is like a beacon that guides our body, speech, and mind in new directions. But be realistic. If you can vow not to do them again for a year, a month, a day, even a minute, even three seconds, <laughs> whatever is realistic. And very happily, Guru Vajrasattva, who is essence your own guru, manifesting as the Buddha Vajrasattva, solely for your benefit, melts into white light and absorbs into you at your forehead. This energy of white light comes to your heart chakra and merges with your own very subtle consciousness, becoming oneness with you. And then I always recommend rejoicing. So you want to rejoice in all the positive actions, the kindness, generosity, prayers, helpfulness, teachings, effort to increase your good qualities, to degree, decrease your unskillful habits, to free others from suffering that you have done, are now doing in this present life, and will do in the future. And that others have done, are now doing in this present life, and will do in the future, thinking how wonderful this is. This is the manifestation of Buddha nature. Feel happy that all your delusions, which are the cause of the harm we do with our body and speech, are totally purified, gone, finished. And that no way is there any space in your heart now for anything but love and kindness and forgiveness and wisdom and bliss and compassion. Enjoy the moment. You want to dedicate it. So may the precious bodhicitta, which is empty, the source of all happiness and success, which is empty, for myself, who is empty, and all other sentient beings who are empty, be generated within my own and the minds of all sentient beings, which are all empty without even a second's delay. And may that which has been generated be increased. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. So questions. Benevolent Tantron, I think you answered my question for the remedy, but I want to make sure what I understood. So these recommended are more powerful right but that doesn't mean that i can use other type of remedy like you right. said an apology or other thing uh, you said a donation yeah. okay the key is those other four uh, the other three opponent powers you know you need to do the generating the regret you need to be relying on the buddhist teachings you need to take refuge and think about the fact that sentient beings are the cause for our enlightenment. They're the cause for all our future happiness. You know? So we want to rely on that. So we have to give some thought to that. But, um, and that's what, and so then the remedy be whatever, whatever. Um, and, but then you set the resolve and don't forget to dedicate. Hmm. Enjoy. Well, rejoice is not an actual opponent power. I just think it's a good idea, especially if you do this practice at night. It's it's good to go to sleep with the rejoicing, not mm -hmm. with the the purification, you know. I mean, and if nothing else, you rejoice over, you know, having just done that practice. But um, it's also really good to um, 
to remember the things you do well, <laughs> you know, all the good qualities you have. We want to keep doing them, you know, so that's really important. Um, so everything else, you know, the visualizations, all that stuff is not as important as those actual opponent powers, you know, thinking about regret, relying on the two genes, you know. Um, so like in the beginning, so th the short mantra is Om Vajra Safa Hum. You know, almost everybody's short mantra is Om, the name, and Hum. <laughs> Om Vajra Safa Hum. So like when you're learning the mantra, it's good to make a recording of it. If nothing else, you can you can record it on your phone and play it in the car. And then you just, because you're singing it, you uh, you memorize it. it. It becomes very easy to memorize it that way. So it's so that in your daily practice, you can recite the long one if you have time. If you don't have time, you can recite the short one or you can do a combination of the two, you know? So it's recommended that you do the short one 28 times you rec it's recommended that you do the long one 21 times. The last seven of the short mantra, you kind of just picture yourself getting all those imprints, <laughs> you know, like the smell of garlic in the back, you know, the garlic's gone, but you still have the, you know, that slight odor. So, you know, you can think that way. But the, you know, saying the praise, saying, you know, generating those opponent powers and then, you know, dedicating you know, those are, um, help give it some power. What's really nice to do too, is what I, mean, what I do anyway, what I find helpful is that whenever I do something or say something, you know, and, and you know how, when you say something, you're, you're kind of wishing you could pull it back. I immediately go into Vajrasapa home, you know, to my mind, you know, just, you know, like, uh, <laughs> and that helps me remember to purify it that night. <laughs> So those kinds of ways are helpful. So any thoughts? In the only uh, recognition that uh, after having a, a stage of thumb, the words were much clearer to decide. Yeah. Power of merit. It's just, it's, you know, for some people, the visualization is really powerful. It really helps. I love thinking about, you know, partly because I remember Venerable Rabina going through this, you know, 20 some odd years ago for me, you know, and just, you know, ah, oh, like a fire hose. <laughs> yeah, so whatever. But it's just, I'm sure the Tibetans don't think that's, but that's, but it works for me. So anyway. Um, you also, it seems like it'll take forever, but you can do 21 recitations of this mantra in like seven minutes or something. I mean, because you don't have to sing it. So once you know it by heart, it's on you know, which is what we do. So, you know, um, and then when you just simply don't have the time or you're way too tired, you say the short mantra, but you, but the key is having that mind of regret you know, and just, and, and then the resolve. And really, like with some things, like I can be a very, I'm a very, I cannot, I can be, I am a very impatient person. So impatience is one of those that I kind of say, okay, I'll try for three seconds tomorrow when I'm around others to not be impatient, you know, but I can get impatient with, you know, I don't know, everything, the washing machine. So it's just, you know, so, you know, we have to try our best. Um, uh, yeah. So anyway, everybody at home okay? All right. So give this a shot. You know, try it out at home and then bring any questions and we'll um, talk about other aspects of, of uh, you know, the how this works in the process. Um, that was what. So just remember that ex exhausting our negative seeds is great, but we we will never get there if we have to exhaust our negative seeds one at a time. So we really would rather not experience that suffering 
not have it ripen and purify our steaks instead so it doesn't ripen as suffering. And then we need to realize emptiness and they'll all be cleaned up all at once. Of course, that's not just a single moment. So, all right. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> We're going to say. Um, so next Thursday, you're having the Medicine Buddha preaching. Oh, are we? Yeah, we can use that as our, our um, remedy.